Okay, our next speaker is uh, uh, Dr. Stefano Bertuzzi. Uh, he is the executive director of the American Society for Cell Biology. And he has a really peculiar uh, career because after uh, being a bench scientist for uh, more than 15 years uh, as a student, postdoc, and PI, he moved uh, to the field of science policy at NIH. And uh, he became um, the um, uh, science policy and communication director of the National Institute of Mental Health at uh, NIH. Um, I think uh, his presentation will be uh, quite tough because uh, um, we are just out from uh, the time of the economic shutdown. The um, uh, new budget was approved but until January 15, and uh, we are really in a, in, a, in a difficult time for science and healthcare. So he is going to give us a recipe, I hope, <laughs> how to plan our career, how to think about our professional choices during time of economical shutdown. Welcome, Dr. Bertuzzi, and thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Chiara. Pleasure to be here. And uh, I have trimmed several slides, so I hope it still come out somewhat cogent. Um, first of all, you have heard from these uh, uh, before, either in space or in uh, neuroscience, how, and yesterday and this morning, how fundamental and the advances that science has made, the progress that we have reached. And yesterday we were asking ourselves, what's the recipe, what's the magic, right? And going home, I have tried to wrap it up, and I have wrapped it into three things that to me are the secret of the advances that we made. So first of all, it's basic science, understanding the fundamental question of biology. I'm speaking mostly about biology. The second one is an innovation strategy, so a system that can work, and it's not left to some good, some not so good, some bad, you know, to find their way, but really a system that where everybody can thrive according to certain criteria that are set as a national priority as an important thing. And the third one, which is the focus of what I'm going to be talking about, is the workforce. It's you. It's the people that need to receive that training and that need to get ready, you know, to be part and do the discoveries. So where's the problem? This is sort of the pipeline of when I and perhaps some a little bit older than I am started. So it was essentially looked like a pipeline. So the input and the output was somewhat proportional. So you had enough people entering in the workforce, and there were enough opportunity in academia to become a professor. Today, it doesn't look anything like that. Uh, I don't have time. I had a lot of data, but I don't have time to share them. I'll just give you one number here, 25%. You should hang a big poster in your offices, 25%, to remind yourself that out of everyone who enters graduate school in the United States, 25% actually receive a tenure track position, not even tenure, right? So 25%. So what's happening? Look at, this, look at this chart. If you look at the job position in biological sciences, so in, uh, uh, at the beginning of the 70s, people that received their PhD five to six years before, about 55% of them, after five, six years of uh, graduating, had received a tenure track position. Today is less, you know, it's around 10%. So essentially, the opportunities for tenure position are very tough, and it's reflected in what uh, Antonello just said. You know, when you have 10% uh, funding line, you know, it reflects immediately on the opportunities in academia. So where have all the positions gone? What do people do? Actually, they're going into positions that did not exist before. So there is this gigantic holding tank of non-positions, and it's the postdoc holding tank. It gives me, I cringe at this thing here, because it's an absolute nonsense. Postdoc is not even a name, for Christ's sake. Postdoc is a time, you know. We don't even have the gut of giving a name to this thing here. We call them postdoc, like after the conference. You are, you're during the conference, right? Yeah, so it doesn't make any sense, you know. But you know, I believe that words mean something, and the fact that we don't even have a name for postdoc is precisely, it's precisely the translation of this chart. 
when the, sis, the training system was designed, the postdoc essentially did not exist. So it was a very transient situation. And now it has become um, the, the default pathway, this big holding tank, but without being a real job. It's a training position that just sits there, and we're not really sure what we're doing with it. And then if you see over time, the other um, fractions, more or less the same, with an exception for the growth in industry. So I don't have time, again, to go through it as I would like to, but let me tell you one thing in interest. Actually, I can skip this. I don't have time. Um, so I would propose that in your institution, that in this room, that ISNAF, that everyone, ban one, two words, which is alternative careers. Because I think that we have done a very disservice to uh, our scientific endeavor by stigmatizing the fact that everybody needs to get an academic position. I, I was a tenured professor, so uh, I, I could have comfortably stayed there, and I had to return $1 million when I decided to take another path. But there is this perception that if you don't make it there, you know, you are a failure. So alternative career is a subliminal nicer word to say you didn't quite make it. And we as a scientific community are the one to blame for this. And I think that we really need to move away from this and instead think of different career path. And this has to happen early in development. So what should be done? And I want to, following what Chiara really asked me to do, I want to follow more on advice for you than big policy things. So I'll skip through the policy very quickly. Ideally, we would need to increase demand. It really hurts me to hear that NIDA pay lines are 10% when of the brain we probably know 5%. So we would need 95% more research to do. But so we should act on the on the demand side. But given the situation, I don't see this happening in the tea leaves in the in the short run. So there are many other things that we should be doing, and uh, I don't really have time to go to the policy because I want to go through what you can do realistically now. So the first thing that I have for you is be demanding with your PI. The PI who hired you as a postdoc, as a graduate student, hired you because you're smart, because you're hardworking, because you're brilliant, because you know you're, you're enamored with your science. But this person also has responsibilities for your career. So he, he owes you as much as you owe him or her. And so I really encourage you to ask and seek advice about your career from your PI. The second thing is that, let's face it, always the best scientists are not the best mentors that you can run into. So I would strongly recommend seek mentorship outside of the lab. In some cases, um, it's obvious because there may be a conflict of interest. You may feel uncomfortable talking to your boss about something, and so having someone outside, it's a safer space. But in general, you know, you may find yourself better talking to someone else. So really find a mentor that you systematically talk to, that you check things with. The third thing is take advantage of all training opportunities that you can possibly imagine, and I'll get back to that. Seek information. At the tender age of 42, uh, with two small children, uh, I decided to go for a master's uh, degree. Uh, and uh, I was undecided whether to do an MBA or a, a master's in public health. And so, again, I was in a situation where my most valued commodity was time. So I wanted to research very, very carefully what I was getting myself into. And I was shocked by looking at how much information you have you know, about programs like this compared to PhD programs. It's, it's a black box. You, know, you enter the cell biology program and nowhere to be found what is the placement rate? What is the success rate of people that graduate from there? How many get jobs in academia? How many get jobs in industry? How many get jobs at Giants and Safeway? How many get, you know, uh, end up doing other things? So there's really a lack of information. It's really hard, but it's fundamental for you to know what you're getting yourself into. And so I strongly recommend to dig all the information, ask the person who knows everything, Google, and figure out you know, as much information as you can. As, as uh, Antonella was saying, don't be afraid. You know, contact the departments. Go to the people and ask them. You know, Tell me about the people that graduated or the postdocs that come to your lab. What happened to them? Where did they disappear? You know, and uh, this is very, very important. I think it's probably, if you have to take home one thing, just do this, because I think it's really the most important. 
And uh, the other thing is, how many of you have a postdoc committee in your institution? Quite a few, that's good, about 30, 40%, I would say. That's good, those who don't, go home and uh, start making waves and form a postdoc committee. Again, move away from this invisible status, you know, and, and say, we are here, you know, we are actually running the science enterprise, so we want to be part of the workforce and, uh, and have a say in it. And then cast the widest possible net, you know, network, 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 talk to people. The figure of the scientist in its ivory tower in the lab is way gone, you know, so you really need to be able to develop your own network of people and, uh, and know what's going on outside. And then I told you already, hang the 25% poster and say, do I really, you know, am I really ready for this or not? And most of all, don't think that you're stuck in a rut. So I want to have like a one minute, do I have one more minute? No, well, <laughs> oh, be careful what you say, <laughs> uh, is uh, I'd like to uh, tell you what, what we're doing at ASCB, the American Society for Cell Biology. Since I started, I made, uh, with my board, the number one priority for us strategically, the young scientist, because we run really in this situation, run the risk of losing the next generation of scientists, which is the worst possible thing that can happen. So we really want to make sure that we provide all the help. This is our number one uh, strategic priority. And so, for example, to take and try to implement all the reports that you may or may not have heard on the workforce issue, there, there are several. But one thing that we're doing is for next summer in 2014, we're starting in collaboration with the Keck Institute in California, a two-week uh, training camp uh, for scientists, cell biologists, basic scientists in general, who are considering career in industry. So the way you do science in industry is very different than the way you do science in academia. The, a good scientist is a good scientist, but if you're in industry, you know, you're going to be thinking about, is this druggable? Uh, what is a molecular target? How do you validate a target? And uh, how do you have to put screening, you know, to, uh, to validate that target, and so on and so forth. And then you need all the management skills uh, to interact with the different components of the industry. It's teamwork. It's very, very different than what you get in academia. So for people that have an interest in going, in, in going to industry, we thought it was important to offer a course that may uh, help them um, gain those skills that make them more competitive in their applications or figure out that maybe that is not for me. So this is all going to be paid by ASCB for about 40, 50, we'll see uh, applicants, successful applicants that want to do this. So I really encourage you to keep an eye on this if you have an interest in, uh, uh, in, in industry. The other thing is, very important, we have one-on-one -on -one CV review. One of the things that we really pride, we're proud of ASCB is that we have an amazing leadership. We have 29 Nobel laureate, including two of the latest one uh, that uh, just received the Nobel Prize this year for medicine. So we really, we really ask them, not just the Nobel laureate, but all our senior uh, scientists, to take a look at, the, at those who submit uh, CVs for their review They're on the job market and say, Look at the CV. You know, if you would receive it as an application for you, what would you what would catch you as a good thing or a bad thing? And then having that feedback from those that do hiring all the time is very very important. The other thing is, we really want to promote science outreach. We think that that's a very important job as scientists, especially these uh, uh, these uh, these days, uh, to reach out to society. And so we have many things uh, related to uh, outreach, like making movies and presenting science to others. Um, we have funds for organizing local meetings. Uh, so very important I, as well to develop your leadership skill. How do you organize a meeting? How do you feature your science in your university, in your city? And so we give you funds to organize whatever you want to do, come up with a proposal, and then you can put it and you can show, you know, what, what, uh, showcase your science and the science of your colleagues in that particular field. We have formed a uh, very active committee called COMPAS, the Committee on Postdoc and Students. They're going gangbuster. Uh, they just have a, uh, the latest thing I heard, it's so wonderful, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, don't tell the other committees, uh, but this is really my favorite. Uh, and uh, the latest thing that they're doing right now is a course, I mean a, a little webinar on how to print posters on uh, Canvas. 
And uh, so it's, it's way cool. I didn't know it existed. You know, you have your poster on canvas, and then you put it in your bag, you crunch it. They have all these things which are absolutely unbelievable. It's, some things are more substantial than this. But, uh, but it's actually very interesting to see the creativity and the form of discussion on how to do things. Um, we have a very active website with uh, the ASCB post for science information. So if you have a penchant for science writing, you're always looking for writers. Take a look, come, write. You know, it's important if you want to go in science writing, you'll have a portfolio of things that you have written. And then we have a lot of initiative, the annual mini presentation help, career coaching, grant writing, networking. Actually, this year, what I did in, in December in New Orleans, I have hired the producers of Good Morning America that are coming, and they're giving a one-on-one -on -one training on how to uh, speak in public about science and how to give a PowerPoint presentation. So you can give your job talk. You actually go there with your job talk, and they're going to they're, they're gonna be filming you. Uh, and so you can see yourself, your body language. They're going to give you advice. So all these things matter, because uh, we always thought that the shabby scientist is the coolest one. Guess what? That is not true. If someone still believes that, it's time to wake up. It's not like that anymore. So uh, this year we had the Calusa Prize for graduate student, $5,000, and we haven't announced it yet. And um, if, again, uh, if you really want to contact me, please, my email is uh, right here, sbertuzzi at ascb.org, or you can find me on uh, Twitter uh, and uh, Facebook. And, uh, any questions you have, be very happy to help you. And um, uh, I hope that this was at least of a little bit of help. Thank you.